Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. So today we're going to be going over the process of how you hook a generator up to your house. So I'm just using a little generator here. This is a Duramax uh, dual fuel generator. So I'm actually running off of propane over there right now, which is what I wanted because propane is a little bit less problematic than gasoline. So with this one 240 volt plug, we can power the entire property uh, going through this one extension cord coming up right here behind my panel and you'll see it comes up right underneath right here and ultimately that in that box is connected and then from there we can pick and choose which uh, different circuits we want to have powered so I'll show you how to get a generator interlock kit installed so that it is safe and will not backfeed into the utility. And then I'll show you how to install your backfed breaker as well as the wiring going from there to your power inlet box. Now typically this power inlet box would be mounted on the house itself because most people have their first panel inside the actual house. In my case I have it out here but it would be the exact same thing if it were mounted on the side of your house. And then you can see right down here on the bottom of this this is where our power from our generator is connected to the building. You can see all the prongs are sticking down from that. And that is the other reason why you need that interlocked breaker because these prongs would be live power or could be live power if you didn't have that interlocking kit set up. And at the end of the video, we'll go through the process of getting the generator itself started up and switching over the breakers and the correct order in which to do that. Now remember that working with this electrical stuff is very dangerous and you need to know what you're doing to do this successfully and to make sure that you are following all the laws and regulations that are in your area. Contact an electrician, contact your local state inspector or the inspector having jurisdiction in your area and talk to them about it if you're thinking about doing this because if something gets goofed up, it can be dangerous. So make sure you order the correct kit. This is actually the third kit that I've gotten. The first time I ordered the wrong one, the second time I ordered the correct one, but they sent me the wrong one, and the third time was the charm, and I eventually got the correct kit. So I'll link in the description to the different kits that you may need. So right here is the panel that we're going to be installing this uh, interlock kit on. So we're gonna start by just removing this cover. Now, uh, one thing to note is that this uh, kit will only work in the upper right hand portion of where your breakers are installed. So right here where this breaker is, we're going to actually have to move that down to this spot right here. So we'll be doing that first. So I'm just going to remove the three screws that hold uh, this panel cover in place here. Also make sure you take off any jewelry that you may be wearing anytime you're working inside of a panel. It's just an unnecessary hazard that is avoidable. So I got my gloves and my safety glasses. So before we open the panel, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this to the off position, just like so. And that's not fully gonna remove all the power inside of this panel, but it does at least de-energize the portion that is downstream of this breaker. I'll show you here in just a second what, your, what still has power on it. So here inside of the panel, these top lugs up here are still gonna have power on them, but everything that's down here, there's no power on these legs coming down. But you still wanna treat everything as if it did have power. So we know we need this top position right here for our interlocked breaker. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna unsnap this and move it down out of the way. Now we're going to work on the panel cover itself and on installing the generator interlock kit. We know right away that we need to remove these two tabs here for that uh, breaker that we had to move down and then these, this top, these top two slots right here are going to be where our new 30 amp breaker will be installed. So here are the pieces that come with this kit. It's really basic. However, I do think it's a good idea to go with an OEM kit because it's all been tested and approved and UL listed. Now the outdoor version uh, is going to have a squared off corner like this instead of a rounded corner. The funny thing is they actually don't even show the correct one on this picture here. That's technically the indoor version. But anyway, no wonder it's confusing to get the correct one ordered, I guess. So bringing the panel over here, 
we can see how this will work. When it's like this, our main breaker will be turned on and our standby breaker will be turned off. And then when we slide it up, right like that, then that's gonna require that our utility be turned off and it'll allow us to turn on our power inlet box and consequently generator. Now, in order to know where to drill these holes, they've given us a little template piece. And we'll flip our cover over. And these first holes we'll be drilling here are gonna be three thirty seconds of an inch. Okay, now we'll just flip it over and kind of see if it looks like it's lining up correctly, which it certainly looks like it does. So we're gonna drill out these holes a little bit larger now. And this time we'll be using the three sixteenths. Then we'll just make sure we don't have any burrs. So we're ready to uh, install our sliding interlock plate here using the included shoulder screws and nuts that will go on the back side. And it's actually a very snug fit, so I'm actually going to have to just screw these into place here. It's just exactly perfect though. It's not uh, difficult or anything to get them through. They just don't slide through. So with the cover on its side now, we can install the included nuts. And these are kind of a lock nut. You can feel that they um, they do not just spin on freely. So I'm gonna hold this on the back side. There we go. So there we have it. So I'm gonna be mounting the power inlet box right about here. I'm actually gonna use this existing bolt to anchor the box in place, which would be kind of handy. And then we're just going to be coming straight in the back of the box right about here. So I will be drilling a new hole right there. So I'm going to make up a little short piece of conduit that's going to go in between. I'm just using a little bit of 3 quarter inch PVC to bring the wires into the back of my power inlet box. Now on this inside part right here, you just kind of want to use a utility knife to take the sharp edge off of this where it comes through initially into the box so that it doesn't uh, nick the wires while you're pulling the wires in and through. I'm temporarily gonna take this uh, plug out of here so that I have room for while I'm anchoring the box in place. I sometimes like to just thread the screws back in so they don't end up going missing on you somehow, some way. So we'll be using this, uh, this rear knockout right here that will be running our 10 gauge wires through. So we got that out, so our connector will go right there. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we need to talk about types of wire here really quickly. For the majority of the time, you're going to be using this 10-3 with ground. Now, this is technically a Romex cable that is designed to be used indoors and not in any sort of a damp environment. So normally, you'd be bringing this wire out straight through the side of the house and into your uh, your power inlet box, just right through the wall. Now, if you need to run the cable outside of the house at all, you're not allowed to use this stuff, even if it is inside of a conduit. You need to use something that's rated to be used uh, where there is moisture. In my case, I'm hooking up my power inlet box outside here on my electrical meter area. And so I'm just running a really short cable through from this box into my electrical panel but I still can't technically use this orange cable here. So we have this piece right here. This is a the same exact cable, except for it's a UF cable, or UFB, underground feeder cable. And this stuff is designed to be used in damp environments. 
and you can use the individually stranded stuff like this as long as it's rated for THWN and as long as you run it inside of a conduit. This technically doesn't have to be in conduit, however you can put it in conduit if you want to. If you can hear laughing in the background, it's because the kids are jumping on the trampoline. So I'm using this UF cable, so I had to strip that back, obviously. It's kind of a difficult process. I'll put a card right up above here. You guys can look at my longer video I did about how to strip that cable back. But in most cases, you're going to be using that orange stuff, which is just the same as stripping any other regular Romex cable. Now, even though I have the main breaker shut off, we do have to be mindful that these top terminals here are always live so we have 120 volts on each one of these legs right here so I gotta be super careful and mindful of those and now we're just going to route our wires in an orderly fashion as much as possible while getting them as far out of the way as possible you can see how I'm using an insulated screwdriver to hopefully be as safe as possible if I were to slip and come in contact with one of those live lugs uh, hopefully I would survive Okay, so now we have our ground and our neutral wire landed on our neutral bus. This also is our grounding bus because this is our first panel on the property. So the grounds and the neutrals are not separated. If, however, you had a separate uh, grounding bar, you would just land your bare ground wire onto that grounding bar and then your neutral wire on the neutral bus, just like we see right here. Strip back about a half inch of insulation or so. And then we'll just open up those terminals on our new breaker. Now question for you electricians out there. How many of you guys use a torque screwdriver? Because all these uh, connections have torque ratings and a certain number of inch pounds. And I don't know, like I've never really seen somebody use them very much. But is it something that you guys think is a good thing? Uh, let me know in the comments. Okay, so we've got our wire run up right through here. Our cable is still fully uh, enclosed there. We can see that we have our 10-3 with ground cable coming up. And then I ran my neutral and ground wire all the way up across the top over and tied them in on this side. I could have cut them short and, and uh, put them right there, but I like to have the additional flexibility. So probably should have just trimmed them back and put them right there but uh, they are pretty much out of the way though so I don't think that's a big concern and then obviously our our wires would have just came up here and terminated straight into our new double pole breaker for our generator uh, but we didn't do that because I ran them up and around and down and through my sense energy monitor clamps now there's going to be no current going through those 99% of the time but when I do hook up my generator I'll be able to use my sense energy monitor to um, see how much power that I'm using on my generator and therefore be able to balance the load nicely inside of the house it'll just be kind of convenient but that's kind of an unnecessary added step so I just ran those down and through so normally the normally these clamps monitor the amperage coming through my mains here but when I'm running my generator it will actually be able to monitor the power coming through uh, on those 10 gauge 30 amp wires if any of you are interested in getting a sense home energy monitor they have actually given us a discount for subscribers of this channel so you can hit that link right in the description where you can get a discount on your unit if you decide to purchase one they also make a fantastic gift for any tech savvy uh, individuals uh, that you may have in your family so that might be a good option coming up this christmas so up next we're going to be installing the uh, retaining bracket and we have to remove this screw right here underneath the main breaker in order to do that. So it just slips right over the top of that breaker and you can then tighten it into position. So there everything is nicely installed. We have our double pole breaker that is going to be interlocked for our generator inlet box. So we're going to strip all of our wires back. And then we'll take our red wire nuts which are rated to uh, be used with uh, this size of conductor. 
kind of pre-twist our uh, stranded wires a little bit. And then we're gonna start by connecting our ground wire first, as always. Thread it together, tug on both conductors, make sure that they feel good and secure, which they do. And then we'll do the neutral next. Now we'll just take our two hot legs one at a time. Technically it wouldn't matter which color goes to which, but I'm gonna just do the red to red and the black to black. So that seems to be somewhat logical. And we'll roll that one back. There we go. So right there is our inlet plug. You can see why it's so important that that plug never be energized unless um, the, the cord itself is plugged into it to supply power. And that's what that interlock kit also does. It doesn't allow us to turn this on unless we have our main breaker turned off. So it, it's a very, the interlock kit has many different reasons why it's necessary. Now we can take our generator cord and plug it right in, just like that. So we just shut off our main breaker, and then if we want to turn on our, our uh, generator box, we just turn flip this over to on, and now that is locked right there, so this cannot flip back in the on, uh, into the on position, because it is blocked right there. So if we want to switch back over to grid power, we simply turn off our inlet box, the interlock plate slides down, and now we should be able to just push this over, like so, and now we are back on the grid. So you can see how we can't turn this on right now, because if we could turn it on, then those prongs would be energized. So, fairly simple, but very, very, very important. So before you switch over to generator power, you're going to want to make sure that you turn off any sensitive electronics that you have in the house. So here inside of our, our main panel in the house, I'm going to turn off all of the circuit breakers because I only want select breakers to be turned on when we're actually running the generator. Everything is off inside of this panel, so we'll go outside now. We're getting close to being ready to switch over to generator power. So normally right in there at that panel would be uh, the most common spot where your interlocked uh, power inlet box would be set up. But in this case, I actually have a main disconnect panel, uh, otherwise known as a feed through panel, located right out here in the yard. So right here is where my switch over is for when I switch over to uh, generator power using this interlock kit. We obviously have a few breakers here that we're going to be turning off. So that one, that one. The utility is still turned on right now, so we're going to go ahead and shut off the main, like so. If we wanted to uh, turn on our power inlet box, we could do that right here. But I think I'm actually just going to leave that off for now while we get everything hooked up, and then we'll come back uh, in order to turn that on here in a minute. So right here is our power inlet box. So we're going to go ahead and hook our generator cord to this. This is a 10 gauge cord, so it can handle up to 30 amps. So I'll open this up here and get it lined up, just like so. Now we'll hook the other end of this up to our generator. So right here on the side of the generator, we have our 240 volt uh, outlet right there. So we can go ahead and plug our cord in, just like so. Okay, so this is all hooked up here now, and part of why I like to hook this up first is this is going to ground the generator to the grounding system uh, in my electrical panel there. And that's going to make this safe to operate uh, without hooking a separate ground up to it right here. Now if we wanted to, we could hook up a separate ground, but if you were operating this thing with extension cords only, then it's a really good idea to ground this frame to a copper grounding rod in the ground somewhere because otherwise if something were to short out this frame could become energized and it could be a hazard. Uh, so, But in this case, uh, with this cord attached, in fact, let me just demonstrate to you that this is true. I'm just in continuity mode on my electrical tester so whenever you touch the two terminals together, it beeps just like that 
So if I put a uh, one probe over here on the frame of the panel and one probe over here, I get basically perfect continuity. I'm getting 0.1 ohms. So the frame of this is grounded to this. So we can see right here that we're running at uh, exactly 250 volts, which is what we want. And everything looks to be hooked up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on right here. Nothing should change. And we are in 240 volt mode, which is what we want. Okay, so I just want, I just want to test uh, the voltage coming straight out of this uh, outlet right here. You can see if we test the first one, we're getting 121 volts. The top one, we're getting 121 volts. And if we go between the two hot prongs, so the, the right hand narrower prongs on these two right here, we're getting 244 volts. So everything looks really, really good. So now we can go over to our panel here and we're going to push up our interlock bracket and then turn this to the on position. So we should have 250 volts or so powering the property, but everything is turned off on the individual breakers. So we're gonna turn those on for the ones that we need to use. So right here, this is for the well pump. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. So if you guys are looking for a nice little dual fuel generator, I'll link to this one in the description below. Okay, so I have three main lighting circuits. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and turn all three of those on right away. Well, I think we're gonna turn on the furnace and see if that works. Furnace seems to be coming on, so that's good. So we're just gonna see what kind of voltage we have here right now. The refrigerator is running, I can hear that. 121 volts. I wired this in such a way that I can still use the Sense Energy Monitor, which is super helpful because now I can see exactly how many watts we are using at any given moment. And I know that I can only use about 3,500 watts and we're only using 460 watts right now. So we can turn on some stuff. So I wanna make the well pump run, so I'm gonna leave the water running here until it drops the pressure down to 30 PSI. We are getting really down there as far as our pressure goes. The well pump should be coming on any second. I'm starting to lose faith that it's ever gonna come on. I'm assuming you're running water on purpose? Correct, okay, there it went. It just came on. So it's plus 552 watts when the well pump came on, and so that'll run for a good two minutes now before it shuts back off again. Now, um, obviously the biggest and most important thing with running your generator is that you're, you don't overload the generator. And that's gonna be something where the Sense Energy Monitor really makes a big difference in helping you to manage and make sure that you don't overload it. Uh, for example, I can't even turn on my water heater because each one of those elements draws 4,400 watts. It alternates the elements, so it's a maximum of 4,400 watts. But that's too big for my generator to handle, so I will never actually turn on my electric water heater uh, as long as I have a generator that's this size. So with the interlock kit and the way it's set up right now, uh, it's a 30 amp interlock, and so I could go all the way up to like 7,200 watt generator on that same plug and in that if that's the case if I had that much power I could run my electric hot water heater I could run my air conditioner actually I think I might still be able to run my air conditioner just even with the 3500 watt generator that I have running right now so if you have multiple different things that you need to cycle through like if you're gonna run your air conditioner then you're gonna want to turn off most of the other breakers and only run the air conditioner for a little while and kind of cycle them through and turn on different breakers at different times so we're gonna try just turning our heat up here a little bit and here you can see that we're running our gas furnace just fine. That also is a very important thing to be able to run properly. And sometimes with the newer furnaces, if you're trying to like jerry-rig a cord and get it plugged in, uh, they don't really like that. And uh, if they're not grounded properly, uh, your furnace may not run at all. So having an interlock system like this still maintains all the proper grounding and you shouldn't have too many problems with different appliances running correctly in your house. So here we're going to turn on a few different appliances and just see how close to maxing out the generator we can get.
plugged in the griddle. 2800 watts. Let me think, what can I... Oh, I'll just turn on a few more lights. Three thousand. Are you maxing it? Close to it, yeah. Thirty-one hundred. Oh, it kicked out. So we must have. <laughs> so we tripped it out at like thirty-one hundred watts. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but I don't know if something tried to come on. I'm not sure what it would have been. But if something else tried to come on and it was already maxed out, then obviously it wouldn't be able to come on. So the power is off now, so we'll go out there and uh, and reset the breaker, whichever breaker uh, tripped. I did turn off the things that were taking most of the power, but that was fun, test putting things to their limit. All right, we'll see what uh, what tripped out here. I'm guessing it's just the breaker on the generator itself. That flipped off. Yep, and that is correct. So we can turn this back on here now. And there it goes. But in any case, I think I'm gonna switch it back over to the grid. So what we're gonna do over here first is just turn off uh, the power coming from the generator using our interlocked breaker. So now there's no load on the uh, generator anymore. Flip this off. And now we can switch back over to the grid. So we're gonna go ahead and turn our breaker on for the grid. There we go. It's kind of heavy, hard, difficult. And now we can restore power in the panel downstairs and get everything back to running normal. Now if you have a, really, a lot of really sensitive electronic equipment, you may wanna look into getting a 240 volt uh, inverter generator. Those things are high dollar though. For me, this is perfect. I will link to all the different materials and supplies that you will be needing for this project in the description below. So make sure you check that out. I'll also link to the generator that I have and it's a really economical and inexpensive model to have around. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this to be helpful, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos just like this one. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you actually get a notification when I upload a video. Because if you're just subscribed, you may or may not even see the videos that I put out. So make sure that you have clicked that bell for notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I'd really appreciate it if you guys take the time to share this video uh, with anyone who might be considering or wanting to learn more about using a generator on their property. And click on one of these videos or playlists here on the screen right now. That also helps me out a whole bunch. See you guys later.